Good morning. The first item of business today is general questions, and we start with question number one from James Dornan. To ask the Scottish Government how it will take forward the recommendations of the advisory group on tackling sectarianism. Minister Annabel Ewing. The Scottish Government has been working to take forward the recommendations of the advisory group with relevant organisations since publication in May 2015. I tasked former advisory group chair Dr Duncan Morrow to conduct a review of the implementation of the recommendations and his findings were published on 6 March 2017. I know that Dr Morrow gathered evidence from a wide uh, range of sources including the Scottish Government and all parties in the Chamber and I would like to thank everyone for their constructive contributions. It is very clear from the review that work remains to be done and that we all have a responsibility to meet this challenge. The Scottish Government is fully committed to building on Dr Morrow's work. We have invested £12.5 million over the last five years to tackle sectarianism, including £9.3 million directly invested in community-based projects across Scotland, more than any government before. James Dornan. Thank the Minister for that answer. The Minister will be aware that uh, Dr Morrow says frequently in his report, if not strict liability, then what? Does the Minister agree that the introduction of strict liability on Scottish football clubs would go some considerable way to reducing not only sectarianism, but also homophobia, misogyny and other unacceptable behaviours in Scottish football? Minister. I am aware of Dr Morrow's comments in that regard, and I'm also aware that Mr Dornan is proposing a private member's bill on strict liability and that a consultation period is, is ongoing, and I look forward to seeing the results of that in due course. In the meantime, we will, presiding officer, continue to work with the SPFL, the Scottish FA clubs and other partners to ensure that the recently revised rules and associated guidelines on unacceptable conduct are robust, transparent and effective. The revised rules and guidelines are welcome, but without a concerted and sustained effort, we will not be able to eradicate offensive behaviour from our national game. There is scope to do more, and I encourage the SPFL and the SFA to work to that end. Douglas Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I refer members to my declaration of interest as a football referee for the Scottish FA. The Minister will be aware that the group also recognised the risk that strict liability could have unintended consequences. One of these unintended consequences is the cost to clubs. Indeed, a club in my region, Elgin City, have submitted a response to Mr Dornan's private members' bill, which said a system of strict liability would leave us open to crippling and business-ending costs. What is the Minister's response to these concerns? Minister. Uh, well, I, I uh, hear what the, the member uh, says, and of course uh, the process of Mr Dornan's uh, consultation is ongoing, and I would imagine therefore that the member would wish perhaps to consider making his own uh, representations there too. Obviously we as a government will consider and reflect on the results of that consultation when uh, they are presented to us. Question number two, Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many businesses in North Ayrshire pay no rates because of the Small Business Bonus Scheme and how many will be exempt in 2017-18? Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. The Small Business Bonus Scheme provides 100% relief to around 2,100 properties in North Ayrshire in 2016-17 and is estimated to provide 100% relief to around 2,300 properties in 2017-18. Kenneth Gibson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that positive reply. His clear and concise work to reduce the rates burden for almost half of our small businesses contrasts sharply with the muddled thinking of the UK Chancellor who abruptly cancelled his ill-conceived proposed increase in national insurance contributions from people who are self-employed, often the very same folk this SNP government is helping with their business rates. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that UK Tory ineptitude shows that small businesses in Scotland can rely only on the SNP to support and defend their interests? Cabinet Secretary. I do find myself in agreement uh, with, uh, <laughs> with that point. Of course I do. And uh, this, government, this government is delivering our manifesto as it relates to small businesses. Indeed, we've gone beyond the manifesto in lowering the tax rate to Scotland's small businesses, indeed to all businesses through the poundage. So in lifting 100,000 properties out of, of rates altogether through small business bonus, lowering the tax rate uh, and delivering that enhanced package, yes, I think we've responded very well in delivering our mandate and our manifesto commitments. But in this parliament, in this parliament of minorities, I have to reach out to other political parties to get support 
uh, for my budget, but it appears the Tory Chancellor in Westminster couldn't even get the support of his own Tory members uh, to support his budget proposition. So we will keep delivering for Scotland. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I recently met with the Morningside Traders Association, my constituency, a number of whom have had relatively small changes to their rateable value, but because those rateable values take them from over the £15,000 threshold, that they have large rates bills increases because of the removal of the 50% tax ban. Indeed, their point was the removal of the 50% small business bonus ban has led to something of a cliff edge. Can the Minister confirm what impact assessment has been made of the removal of that ban and the relatively large increases that can uh, be experienced by businesses from a small change in rateable value over the £15,000 mark? I, I, I would remind Daniel Johnston that the Labour Party opposed all the reliefs and the actions that this government set out to support uh, you know, small businesses and businesses right uh, across Scotland. And also I, I detailed in the budget how local authorities could also assist businesses through the local rates uh, relief support as well. So there is a further opportunity uh, for local authorities to assist where they feel they can go further to the national package. There will be a full revaluation uh, report, of course delivered through the actions of the assessors who are independent of Scottish Government, which can set out uh, the picture post uh, revaluation. And we have looked at the uh, impacts of revaluation as we responded through the course uh, of the budget and indeed beyond. So I'll continue to look at that to ensure that we have a, an excellent regime for business rates that ensures that it's a competitive regime and it supports people through revaluation. As I say, faced with the chaos from the Tory party and the opposition from the Labour party, people can only trust the SNP to support businesses uh, in this country uh, to be able to respond to the challenges that they face. Jamie Green. Thank you, President Officer. It's interesting to hear the Cabinet Secretary talk about trusting the SNP, but the reality is that official Scottish Government data shows that nearly a third of all businesses in North Ayrshire will be hit by business rate hikes. Because of the revaluations of a number of small businesses, they are concerned that they will be taken out of the small business bonus scheme, but very little clarity has been provided over this. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how many businesses in North Ayrshire will be taken out of the small business bonus scheme by the increase in their business rates and what assistance the Scottish Government will provide those businesses? Cabinet Secretary. But you see, it avoids the, the answer that I've just given to Mr Gibson, that more businesses will benefit from the small business bonus. That's been opposed by the Tory party. All businesses benefit from the, the, the reduction in the poundage as well, which I think was the right action to take. And we have looked at the package of reliefs. And if Tories and the Labour Party want to look further at enhanced measures for support, maybe they should be supporting local authorities in delivering those kind of schemes. So a number of sectors have welcomed the actions that we have taken. And I would remind all members that many people have been waiting for the reduction in their business rates as a consequence of the revaluation as well. More than half of all businesses will pay nothing. And 70% of businesses will pay the same or less rates than they did before. So that is the right package uh, to support businesses across Scotland and the full details of the impact of revaluation will come out as the assessors provide that uh, final information. And I will look uh, to future financial years to see what further support we can provide. But as I say, all the actions have been totally undermined by the Tories and the Labour Party when it came to business rates in this uh, uh, country who made a lot of noise but absolutely no difference when it came to supporting businesses in this land. Question number three, Joan McAlpine. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what support it provides to local authorities to help regeneration of town centres. Minister Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, the Scottish Government agreed the town centre first principle with COSLA and all council leaders. The principle asks that all investment decision, decisions consider the impact on the town centre as a starting point and I'm pleased that the principle is gathering traction with local authorities applying it to suit their own local circumstances. We support local authorities through measures set out in the town centre action plan which sets the conditions and supports activity across the wider public, private and community sectors to tackle the key issues in town centres across Scotland. We fund and support the Scottish Empty Homes Partnership, which provides practical assistance to councils and others to help owners bring their empty 
homes back into use. It has been central to developing Scotland's network of empty homes officers, and 17 councils now have a dedicated empty homes resource. Uh, and by April 2016, that partnership had assisted in bringing over 1,680 properties back into use. To add to the range of tools available to tackle empty homes and property, we are committed to bringing forward provisions for compulsory sale orders as part of ongoing land reform measures. However, more work is needed to ensure any powers brought forward are effective in tackling the impact of abandoned buildings, particularly those that blight town centres and neighbourhoods. Jim McAlpine. I thank the Minister for that answer. Does the Government agree with me that the UK Government's insistence on charging full VAT for the restoration of buildings while new builds are zero rated is having a detrimental impact on efforts to regenerate town centres? Minister. Um, as Ms McAlpine points out, VAT remains a, a reserved matter. Uh, and regrettably, it seems clear that we are not likely to be heard on this matter by the UK government. Uh, while we don't have uh, hard data to support the member's statement, uh, I would say that it's log a logical conclusion uh, that zero VAT uh, would help regenerate many of these properties that she talks of. But we are focused on other ways that we can support uh, the regeneration of our historic town centres. Uh, for example, through the provision of grant support, such as that dispersed under the Conservation Area Regeneration Scheme. This scheme, which is administered on behalf of the government by Historic Environment Scotland, is aimed at addressing repair works to town centres and high streets where appropriate, bringing local vacant or at-risk buildings back into reuse. I recognise that the member has a major interest in this, uh, presiding officer, uh, and I intend to visit Dumfries shortly, where I know uh, that she has been asking numerous questions on this issue. Question four was not lodged. Question five, Jackson Carlo. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what the outcome was of the discussions between it and the Scottish Council for Jewish Communities regarding the adoption of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Signing officer, Scottish Government officials are due to meet with the Scottish Council for Jewish Communities and the Community Security Trust on the 23rd of March uh, to discuss these issues. Uh, I would also refer the member to my written answer under S5W 05829, which indicated that the Scottish Government agrees uh, with the definition adopted by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response and say to her that I still receive regularly uh, inquiries from constituents in Eastwood, which are where uh, the largest Jewish community in Scotland reside. They're very grateful for the personal support of the First Minister, who attended an event in the community just recently. Uh, and I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for what she says. I hope there can be an early outcome uh, from this and that Scotland too can join those other governments that have adopted this particular resolution. I hope that is the outcome we can all achieve. Cabinet Secretary. Yes, President Officer, I'm grateful to Mr Carlow for the tone and tenor um, of his uh, supplementary question. Perhaps I could also point out to Mr Carlow uh, and to the Chamber that in a written answer uh, to Ross Thompson uh, on the 14th of March, just a few days ago, uh, on the same issue, uh, I replied that we agree uh, with the definition produced by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and consider the resolution that they have adopted to be a helpful guide uh, to the uh, different manifestations uh, of uh, anti-Semitism. Question number six, Patrick Harvey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what communication it's had with the UK Government regarding a possible visit to Scotland by Donald Trump. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, the UK Government has not communicated with us regarding a possible visit by the US President. The Scottish Government wants to build a constructive relationship with the administration based on the shared fundamental values of equality, tolerance, diversity and human rights for all, regardless of faith, race, gender or sexual orientation. However, the First Minister has made clear we would not support a state visit whilst the current travel ban is in place. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. I'm, I'm a little surprised that the Cabinet Secretary thinks those values are shared by the US administration. Uh, however, it's been widely reported that the UK government is considering moving the state visit to Scotland, uh, partly in order, apparently, to avoid public protest. Both governments must surely be aware that millions of people around the world, and certainly many thousands in this country, stand ready to oppose the Trump regime and everything that it represents, and that if such a visit did come to Scotland, it would be met with the biggest public protest seen 
in many years. Can the Scottish Government assure us that Police Scotland will do nothing to limit or suppress that legitimate public protest, including non-violent direct action where appropriate? And can the Cabinet Secretary also confirm that they will not be following the UK Government's line of instructing their own employees not to criticise Trump uh, on their personal social media accounts? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, a, a number of issues in there. In terms of uh, solidarity on the values that I set out, I think there are many, many people in the US that reflect those values, and we should respect those people that do. And indeed, the member might be aware that only uh, a few hours ago that there has been a, a, a block put, put in place with the current travel arrangements by a judge in Hawaii. And I think that will be supported not just by many people in the US, but also internationally. In relation to his point about potential protests, Protests. I think the people of Scotland have already made a clear intention, uh, their position to stand in solidarity with those that are facing perhaps um, negative perceptions by the current US administration. And in his relation to uh, Police Scotland, uh, I certainly think that we uh, in this country have a very good record of making sure that we can and support freedom of expression in protest, but we do so in a peaceful way and that, that should be policed accordingly. And in relation to his, his latter point about uh, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech must exist in lots of different forms and fashions and I think it's regrettable if the UK government is trying to seek to uh, gag its own members of staff. Question number seven, Ash Denham. To ask the Scottish Government whether the Business Rates Review will consider the potential of charging properties marketed through platforms such as Airbnb. Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. The Barclay Review Group has a wide remit to consider all aspects of the business rate system, including those properties that do not currently pay rates such as Airbnb lets. The group will make recommendations to the Government in July. Ash Denham. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update on the work currently being undertaken by the Regulatory Review Group of the regulatory environment within Scotland for key sectors affected by digital disruption? My understanding is that the review group has scoped research and I think it would be very helpful if that research uh, on impacts in the housing sector can help inform uh, the review and then all these matters can be taken into uh, consideration around as we respond to the Barclay Review. Question number eight, Sandra White. President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what measures are in place to ensure there is equal pay for local authority staff across Scotland. Cabinet Secretary Andrew Constance. President Officer, the Equality Act 2010 requires that women should be paid the same as men for doing the same or equivalent work. Local authorities as employers are responsible for ensuring that they comply uh, with the 2010 Act and we expect all Scottish local authorities to comply uh, with their legal obligations. For councils which still have outstanding equal pay cases to settle, uh, I urge them to do so and to do so quickly uh, so that people are not waiting even longer uh, for their loss of income. Sandra White. The, thank the Minister for that reply. The Minister will note that the dispute on equal pay with Glasgow City Council and 5,000 employees has now moved to the Court of Session on appeal after having been heard at the Employment Appeal Tribunal, where they were in favour of the clients. Does the Minister agree with me that Glasgow City Council must stand by their promise to reach agreement over its post-job evaluation pay arrangements and deliver pay equality for all of these people? Angela Constance. Officer, I'm sure the member will understand that while it is inappropriate for me to comment on individual cases uh, or indeed uh, an ongoing legal matter, uh, let me state very uh, plainly that equal pay is not a matter of choice. It is indeed a legal requirement uh, for all uh, employers and that includes uh, local authorities. As a government and myself, uh, I have been consistently robust and public uh, in our criticism of local authorities that are taking excessive time uh, to settle equal pay claims. Uh, some of these cases go back for more uh, than a decade uh, and these excessive delays uh, are of course entirely uh, unacceptable and we are quite right to expect that local authorities, as with all public authorities, should be leading uh, by example and something as fundamental as equal pay. And I reiterate, local authorities uh, must uh, settle their claims uh, and they must do so soon. Stuart McMillan. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that when it comes to the equal pay claims, that the pension contributions should also be included when equal pay settlement takes place? Cabinet Secretary. 
Um, I would uh, support that endeavour, Mr McMillan. It's important uh, that women in particular, uh, as with anybody who has an equal uh, pay claim outstanding, that people get what is due to them. Um, and we have to be very clear in our expectations.